hey hey what's up good people Shelby here welcome to my bathroom uh, as you can tell I'm in a smaller space I've got a little bit of an echo you know and um, honestly <laughs> this lighting is like a trip right now so I hope that y'all will rock with me if you're new to my channel then thank you so much for coming you know it's really nice to share personal spaces with new friends or whatever um, and I hope that you have had a chance to scroll through some of my other videos because I've got giveaways going on um, and I've also just got fun stuff on my channel I just did a TikTok channel and I really enjoyed it so anyways go check it out it's on my Instagram but why are we here and I'm loud it's echoey we are here because someone brought to my attention that I never actually followed up and did my tools cleaning video so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna clean some stuff because we're in quarantine and I've seen y'all photos you're still doing the makeup but are you cleaning your stuff? So today I'm gonna to show you maybe not the best way, not the worst way, but the way that I clean my stuff to make sure that I don't have cooties on my face, you know, like face cooties is 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 real. I mean, I know COVID is is like DEF CON five, um, but face cooties, you know, like let's let's not. We don't we don't play with face cooties. We're grown out here, okay? So if you would like to see my process, my process then you should stay tuned. Go down to the bottom, like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for this month's giveaway. I'll give you instructions at the end of the video. Um, and yeah, let's hop in to this like bathroom anti beat down, like beat down prep because my face is bare and um, I don't do my face with dirty tools. If you are new to my channel, this is my dog um, that's trying to lick me in the face, which he is not allowed to do. We don't roll like that. Anyways, we're gonna talk about cleaning products, but I feel like we need to talk about what makes your products dirty. Like there's makeup, you know, and there's all those beautiful face beats that you do. And then there's this, this face right here. This face that went and found this beauty blender, no, and tried to murder it, okay? This is the second beauty blender that I've caught him kidnapping. There was a first casualty, rip, to my Juno and Co velvet sponge, that face. That face, yeah, he destroyed it. So now I gotta clean this. This is your fault. Here's the deal though. We're all doing our faces pretty regularly, okay? Uh, and you would think that maybe we would stop because we are like in the house, like bored in the house or we're in the house bored, but we're bored in the house, in the house bored doing makeup. So let's clean some stuff. Pretty much I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. These are clean. These are my lovely beauty blenders. And I mean, I have I have some star favorites. I'll tell you what my favorite brands are in a moment. Um, but I'm going, to, I'm going to clean this within an inch of its life. And I may even use alcohol if I can figure out how not to bleach my beauty blender. But that's neither here nor there. I'm going to clean that. Also, I'm going to clean some of my favorite brushes, some of the ones that I use the most. I've got more dirty brushes, but you don't need to see all of those. Um, and then I'm also going to clean one of these as well as this. Now, I don't know if you have one of these. This is a makeup brush remover. It's a color switch. Fenty has a version of this in a cute little pink box. Um, but these little sponges, they should come out. When you take them out, there's stuff in here. Can you see the stuff? Look at that. All of that gets back on your brush almost every time you do a little swipey swipe, you know? Uh, so we're going to clean those. Um, and I'll show you what I use to clean them. And they're pretty straightforward. The only thing I think that I have that's specialty is this cute little pad. This is from e.l.f. I think I paid like you know, three bucks, you know, because e.l.f. is hella budget friendly. And it has different textures on the pad this is one that you can hold in your hand but there's others that you can stick to the bottom of your sink and the different textures on the pad are for different kinds of cleaning for different kinds of brushes so smaller brushes are going to be on the smaller side right here bigger denser brushes are going to go on the big bumpy part and then honestly i just whatever i need to do but this is really like this is like serious cleaning i hardly ever use this uh, unless I'm doing a mass number of brushes. If I just need a quick clean or a small number of brushes, I'm probably actually using a bar soap or detergent. Now, neither one of these is a very strong, stringent product because I can put it on my face. Like this is actually 
this clean all day is a dish soap so I could eat this, right? And then, you know, this is a natural based bar soap. This happens to be black soap. I have a friend who makes them, but I've used ivy, ivory soap before. I've used a number of types of bar soap. Catch that runaway. And they're really effective. Um, more effective sometimes I think than the bar that you buy that comes like with the beauty blender or like that's labeled makeup cleaner. Um, and I've been using these methods for as long as I've been doing my makeup. And I also have almost all of the beauty blenders that I had when I first started. Um, and none of them are, are, you know, glued together or stiff or falling apart or changing color. Like they're hanging in there. So anyways, it's tried and tested. Okay. Okay. Look at that skin. Look at that skin. You know, I don't have no face cooties. Some of that's genetics, but you know, some of it is, um, skin routine, which includes cleaning your tools. So let's, let's, let's talk about beauty blenders that I like. Okay. There's a few brands that I am a fan of. Of course, there's the original, the OG. Don't mind the bite marks. This is one of the ones that I saved. It's a survivor, but she has scars. Okay. Um, this is an OG beauty blender. Really like these, uh, but they're a little bit pricey. Okay. So in addition to these, I am a fan of the Beauty Bakery sponges. These are really cute. They come in a box. They're called blending eggs. They're super cute. There's an entire box for 20 bucks. There's six of them. By comparison, this is 18 bucks minus the chunks, maybe nine bucks now that has the holes in it. Anyways, by comparison, 20 bucks gets me six. 18 bucks gets me one. I also love at the budget friendly end of the spectrum, aka Target, CVS, Rite Aid, Amazon, the Sanaya Kasha uh, Marbled beauty sponge love this i i love how big this gets and i think it's a really great blender um and i have i think about two or three of these i, I love these okay the other is the real technique sponge which have this kind of angled flat side these are also target cvs you know wherever your budget friendly goods are sold um and it has this flat side on it which is really cool and this is the cousin to this one the latest victim of my dog okay uh they have these angled sides, they still have the point, they puff up real big, and they take and hold water really well, okay? So uh, these are actually probably from the same line. This one just happens to be pink, and this one happens to be orange. I hope that you have enjoyed my face, um, because I am now going to change the angle so that you can see what my hands are doing. Not what this mouth do, what these hands do. You know what, it took a dark turn. Let's just, let's just go. The first thing I wanna start with is this lovely sponge situation right here, okay? First, I'm going to rinse out this silver container. Next, I'm gonna do the same thing with the soap. Soap it up, scrub it up. Looks like I wash my hands. And can you see all of that that hides inside? Inside this, uh, this little color switch, okay? These actually dry incredibly fast, so and it's probably because they're so porous. They got so many holes in them, right? Which is good for you because you want this to be clean, but you also want to be able to use it as frequently as possible. So for me, I actually take this and I will just kind of set it on top of the silver container and put it maybe at the head of my sink or over here on the side just to let it dry off so that when I'm ready to use it, it will be both clean and non-mildew smelling because that's nasty. Next, I'm going to go in with this guy. Now, this is one of those makeup rounds or those magic eraser rounds. This is from Pusheen, and it's essentially, I think it's a microfiber um, pad that you can use with just water to wipe off your makeup. Now, the instructions say that you can put it in the washing machine, and then you can put it in the dryer, I believe. But again... Sometimes the quickest thing to do is just put some soap on it, again, using the dish soap, and just work it in there real good, and then wash it right back out. This reminds me of Tati's sponge that she just released for blending and for powder and all that other good stuff, but I'm using this, I use this to clean my face rather than to apply makeup. I've never actually tried applying makeup with it, but I think fundamentally they're different enough that it wouldn't do what I think it would do. Now these Cushine pads, they, uh, the Cushine pads, I think they came in a pack of two. They were really affordable. They came from Amazon. I'll put the price down below so you know. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, as, that's as clean as I think I've gotten it since I had the snafu with the lipstick. But yeah, 
So with this, I am just going to give it one more press. Um, sometimes I'll take a towel and I'll roll it in the towel for a second just to make sure that I get out as much moisture as possible. And then I will lay it right next to my sponge. So next step is the beauty blender. Now I know a number of folks have a bunch of videos about how they clean their blenders. Um, some people are microwaving, they're blending, they're putting in the washing machine. Uh, for me, because I, I usually use my blenders wet to go into the bathroom or into wherever I have access to water and just wet it and clean it the way that I usually do it. It's just, it, it's, it's so immediate and effective that it just works for me, okay? Um, I haven't tried the washing machine trick. I have tried the soaking. I had mixed uh, results with that, but to each his own, right? So I'm gonna take my soap, right? And I'm going to wet the blender, which it probably is already, but just, you know, give it a good spongy moment, you know. Um, and then I'm gonna take the blender and I'm pretty much going to scrub on the sides where I have the most product stuck to it, okay? And don't mind me, this uh, this natural black soap that I have also has some fibers and chia seeds and whatever in it. Um, they act a little bit as an exfoliant, but they also just smell good. So anyway, I'm gonna take the blender and I'm gonna use that and I'm just gonna squeeze, again, squeeze it all out. And as you can see, already this blender is looking like the, like the foundation is gone. But again, that squeeze test, that run through the water, and that squeeze test is so important because these are sponges, remember, they're, they're porous, they suck liquid up, right? Pull these chia seeds off. <laughs> they suck up liquid. So underneath the surface, there is also product, right? So you just need to keep, keep squeezing until you get clear water, ladies and gentlemen and um, non-binary individuals on in, on YouTube. I, I, you know, I don't know who's watching. I'm gonna give this one more run through because I wanna make sure that there's no more foundation inside. And if you, if you think about the way soap works in general, it goes into, into substances and breaks down the bonds. It kind of like melts things. So if there's foundation inside, and I'm getting a little bit of, of brown water, but for the most part, this is clean. Um, if there's foundation inside, using a soap on it helps to break it down. And that's essentially what that little beauty blender brick is that comes with some of them now. I think their formula is different, but I mean, I have black soap, so I will use black soap. Look at a nice clean water. Look at that. Girl, good as new. Look at her life. Look at her whole life. Her whole life is just spotless. I actually just drop the clean ones in on top of the ones that I've already cleaned and I just let them air dry unless I'm going to use them again. But I mean, literally, I, I'm a brown girl, so my foundation gets into these, right? And these are, for the most part, they look, they look pretty new. I have had moments where I've had like something that wouldn't come out, like it was a stain. Sometimes it's shadow, sometimes it's something particularly pigmented, but like this is a mostly white and black sponge, okay? This is a black and white sponge. And for me to be brown skinned and putting on all the colors I put on with my sponges, I feel like this is a pretty good method for these suckers to be clean. Okay, so let's talk about our last, okay, so let's talk about our last little camp of toys, okay? The brushes, okay? As you can see, I use my brushes <laughs> pretty regularly. Uh, I've got a powder brush, a kabuki brush for foundation. I use this for my under eye. This is for my cream concealer and contour. And then this is for um, blending and powder products in general. Unless I'm doing a huge number of brushes, I tend not to use this. I usually will use the soap or I'll use that soap. And as you can tell from the foundation stains, <laughs> I use this pretty frequently, so this isn't like an idea that I came up with just to show y'all. Um, but I appreciate the request that I got to see it. So, first thing I do is I separate my brushes out by size. Like, I want to get all my smaller brushes, like smaller brush heads, together. Um, and I'm going to pretty much just hold them like this. I'm going to wet them up, 
right? Holding them down because I don't want there to be water up in the actual, I don't even know what this is called. What's this called? Ooh, when did I dent that? Shoot. Anyways, uh, up in the little tube that actually holds them in. I don't want water up there. So everything I'm doing should be pointing down, okay? I'm gonna take my uh, block of soap and I'm actually gonna give a little swirl here on all the sides and at the point. Work up a good lather, just like that. And then I'm, I can either do this in my hand or I can do it on here. Now, for the sake of using this, because I know so many people have it, I'll go ahead and use this. I'm gonna run some water over it and I'm gonna go over this smaller nubbin side to lift out as much of the product as possible. And I'm not pressing down real hard, but I'm, I'm giving it some pressure. I don't wanna damage the bristles, but they're pretty resilient. So once I've gotten a good amount of lather happening, and I, you can, I don't know if you can see this brown water that's coming out. I've got a good lather happening here. I'm gonna give it a little bit of rinse, do it again, and then I'm running it back and forth across the bigger ridges to help loosen up, or the vertical ridges rather, to help loosen up anything that's a little bit more stubborn. Because I use this one in particular for cream products, like foundation or concealer, sometimes I need a little bit more attention to make sure that I got it all. I am a fan of Juno & Co brushes. Uh, this is a Melt Cosmetics brush. I really like the Sanaya Kashuk brushes, which is this one. And then I also have a Sephora Pro brush and Fenty brushes. So, just checking this. Yeah, these are these are clean. These are clean. Now that they're clean, um, I want to make sure I either let them dry flat or I want to have them in a brush holder that has an angle down, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze out the excess water, just like I did before, make sure the water all comes out clear, and then I'm going to shape them back into the original shape that they were because they have been a little traumatized. Don't mind the dent, not sure what happened there. Uh, they've been a little traumatized. I'm gonna shake off some of the water that's on the handle and then I'm gonna set it to the side. For these, I could do these all. Monet and left foot. Whoa! Okay, so yeah, that's all the clean stuff. Okay, so thank you for taking that cute little clean journey with me. Uh, I have one lock that is just like, it's like alfalfa, like lay down, lay down. I'm glad I was able to share that with you guys. I feel like it was a really deep connection that we had. <laughs> no, I mean, but for real though. Okay, so your cleaning routine, your, your tool cleaning routine, I feel like it's a part of your skincare. It's a part of your hygiene kind of. We all clean our bodies, we clean our teeth, we clean our hair, you know, we clean our faces. And when you use those products, you put them on your face, you put them near your eyes, you do all this stuff. Um, if you don't clean them, then over time, I feel like they get really gunky, you know? Please don't know my dog. Lincoln! They get really gunky, they get really dirty. If you have a dog, like I do, then, um, then there's a whole other layer of like, cleaning to satisfaction. So the frequency that you clean with is totally up to you. Um, I know some people, they clean their brushes every time they use them. I usually clean my beauty blender every time because it's so easy to clean. Um, but for face brushes, like foundation brushes, and for powder brushes, things like that, I probably try to clean those once a week to a week and a half depending on how many times I've done my face now since we're in quarantine of course I'm not doing my face for makeup like every day for work or anything I'm not even going out because I know where to go but for eye brushes especially ones that I use on the lid and like in the water line and like liquid liner brushes um, or for my brows which are the little spoolies I try to clean those a little more frequently and pay attention to when they just they just feel like they need attention because I don't want to reapply germs or bacteria or anything like that to my face. I just don't want to. And when you think about it, you shouldn't want to too. Give it a shot. I mean, you might really like it. It might be super effective. Whatever you do, make sure you're cleaning them. Don't just throw them away. Unless they are those little beauty wedges, you know, the old school white ones, those are made to be thrown away. Your beauty blenders, your brushes, those things are not made to be just tossed after one use. Again, budget friendly, but also smart. Like I got some favorites. I ain't trying to toss her out just cause she's a little bit stained. 
I'm going to claim her. I'm going to save her beauty life. Save a life today. Save a beauty blender's life today. Anyways, okay, so uh, before I hop off, let's call out the brands. Um, this necklace and these earrings, they are cowrie shells. They are beautiful. They are made from fair trade. They are sourced and designed um, by a wonderful sister uh, who lives in the Canada area. Uh, the brand is called Omi Woods, okay? These are silver. They're not going to tarnish. They're beautifully made, and they're literally my jewelry uniform right now. Like, we're not going nowhere, but I feel special. The... What is this old bougie? I have the Givenchy black lip gloss on. I love this. It feels like a lip oil, but reminds me of like if, hmm, if gloss bomb came in black, this would be it. And it smells good. Anyways, uh, and then the top is from Fabletics. Uh, I'm probably going to do a fitness wear haul anyway and give you guys updates on my fitness journey right now just what I'm doing if you're on my Instagram then you already know probably but I'll still tell you you know I share I share um let's see oh giveaway okay oh and uh sorry before giveaway nails so I did I, I didn't panic much when we got trapped in quarantine I realized I wasn't gonna be able to get my nails done and I didn't know how to necessarily take them off without ripping out my nail beds so uh, once I went through the process of figuring out how to get them off I did a little research and I watched a bunch of videos and I settled on the Tierra Sky system question of the day for the giveaway Ooh. okay so have you ever thrown away a beauty blender or a brush because you couldn't get it clean that's what I want to know Okay, uh, and if there's anything else you guys want me to share or shoot that is relevant for Corona or relevant for whatever, comment down below, like, comment, subscribe, and um, protect your beauty blenders from animals and other wild things in the world. Um, ciao for now.